<laughs> there we go. This series is really meant to help all students, whether you're uh, going to be a freshman this coming up year or you're a returning undergrad student, we're here to support you throughout this series. So stay tuned every Thursday, three to four, for a new topic and new special guest. Um, today, I am joined with uh, three students, and we have with us uh, Carly, Braden, and Pooja. And we are going to be talking with y'all about the 15 tips that they have for you guys um, regarding how to survive freshman year. So everyone is usually really nervous their freshman year and we want to be there to support you through everything. So we're gonna kick this off. Um, I want, you know, Braden, uh, Pooja, Carly, y'all ready to go? Awesome. So make sure y'all are unmuted and we'll get this started. Okay, so we're gonna get this going since we just have an hour. So tip number one is gonna come from Pooja. Pooja, what is your first tip for students? My first tip is to know your advisor. I think it's really helpful when you are starting college and it's a whole different world. You're away from your family and you're just surrounded by all these new people. And if you ever need advice, it's good to, it's better to go to your advisor than like, your friends or your parents or your family because they've had so many students come to them as it is. They know what's going on. They can easily help you with what's going on in school, whether it needs like you need help with changing your major, joining new clubs, or you're just having trouble adjusting to college life. I mean, Ms. Haley is one of my advisors and I honestly text her every single time I have a <laughs> mental breakdown. Like, um, I'll be in class or something. I'm, I'll text Miss Haley. I'm like, I need to come talk to you. I think I want to change my major or something's going on in my life and I just don't want to be in class right now. So I'm going to come see you right after. But I definitely think it's a good idea to get to know your advisors because they really are there to help you. They want to make sure you're doing everything that you can to get to where you want to go. Absolutely. Um, you know, Carly and Brayden, have y'all had similar experiences just getting to know your advisor and how that's been helpful? Yeah, we were just, yes, um, oh, go ahead, Braden. you got it. Yeah, um, so knowing an advisor, your advisor would probably be one of the most important things you can do because we're not all the same student. So like personally for me, so like my major, I'm a pre-med major and like, yes, like when you come to LSU during like, or when you do your, um, I can't think of it, uh, your orientation. orientation, they give you like a, mm -hmm. yeah, the orientation, they give you like a, a sheet and it's like, the list of classes you have to take and it like it may seem like oh yeah you have to do this this and this but from personal experiences like um and going to Haley like even though you have to take like it shows you a list of classes it, you're like it guides you to take in order like you can move stuff around and move classes up push classes back so I think knowing your advisor like in that aspect helps out a lot because managing your course load like balancing out your harder classes and some easier classes is very important. And I mean, as a student, you really don't know how to do that on your own. So it's really important to know your advisor. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I was saying earlier how there was a time where I think Pooja walked in and then I walked in right behind her and then one of our other friends walked in and um, just to talk to Miss Haley, just because we were all having one of those days, it was a midterms or something. And we were all just having a panic and just to have an advisor there to talk to you instead of trying to compare grades with friends if you don't want to do that it's really nice to have somebody that's outside of your um, normal day-to-day -day life to talk to you absolutely i think that's great advice all right tip number two is going to come from brayden brayden what's your first tip yes so the first tip i have is do not feel pressure to pick a major um from personal like experiences like well first off I always like I kind of had a general idea of what I wanted to be so it really wasn't that difficult for me to pick my major but I've had a lot of friends that have changed majors um a lot of friends that were undeclared and I mean honestly um in college your first two years you kind of have time to decide what you want to do while you're taking general classes so there's honestly no need to rush um, and just get a feel for stuff that you might like, because I mean, you're going to college to find your career. And if you don't like, why pick something you're not going to enjoy 10 years from now? So there's really no rush. And I really and strongly suggest that you take your time, get a feel for college, um, 
and just like be really like thorough and um, like when picking your major. Awesome. I think that's really great advice. I have a lot of students that get really nervous at orientation. They want to hurry up and pick a major. They feel like they have to have it all figured out that first day. And the truth is the first, you know, year you're really taking some of those general classes that you mentioned, Braden. And, you know, it, there really is no pressure to hurry up and, and, and pick a whole future for yourself. You really can take some time to explore. So I do think that's really great advice. All right, Carly, what is your first tip for tip number three? So my first tip is a big one. Go to class. Um, <laughs> when you go to college, you don't have um, mom there to wake you up in the morning and uh, tell you to get up for class. You're all on your own. And you really do get a good benefit from going to class. There's a lot of things that professors say that are on your test. And sometimes I'll be in a test and be like, oh, I didn't study that. But I remember in class, they said um, such and such. And it just gives you a face-to-face -face relation with your teachers. And it's really all around just better to go to class. It prevents you from having to study as much because mm -hmm. you're cutting out an hour that you're basically studying because you're going to class. Um, right. So it's very beneficial to go to class. And it's very easy for people not to go to class as well. But it's very beneficial to go to class. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and like one thing I have to add on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so like one thing I want to add on to that, going to class is honestly one of the most important things at college. Like, so one of the benefits of college is you get to pick your schedule with the classes being available. And like, so like not all classes are going to be available. So sometimes you'll get a class that you may not have preferred. But the reason college is better than high school, in my opinion, is you're not going to class for eight hours a day or longer. Mm -hmm. So honestly, like, I personally didn't think it was that hard to go to class because like what it's like an hour a day, maybe two, three max. Mm -hmm. um, and like a lot of my classes I was in, like attendance, um, it wasn't mandatory, but you can get bonus, the teacher will give you tips. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually shown that when you attend class, your grades will be higher. Um, I think in the my biology class I took this spring, if you attended class, I think 85% of the time your grade was a letter higher than people that didn't. So that's one of the big things um, that I would stress. Um, like your teacher, if they see you more, um, then they'll be more familiar with your face. If you have to ask a question or something like that, you like, you won't be a total stranger. So like if you're coming in and you have like a 79 and you really want a B or an 89 and you really want an A that you like really worked hard for. If your teacher is familiar with you will change your, then it's easier for them to give you bonus points or something to do to push your grade over that threshold right. instead of just being a total stranger then be like, so now you want to come to me and stuff like that. Right. They're more likely to help you if they know you and they know you're working hard and they know you're participating. That's, that's really great advice. All right. So we're going to turn it back to Pooja. What is your second tip, Pooja? My tip second four. tip is to not procrastinate. I know it's very easy, like when you're coming in as a freshman to just like want to hang out with your friends and do everything that they're doing but everyone is doing their own thing. They're doing their own major. And just because it seems like they're not studying doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, like they might be doing something in their room and you're like, oh, well, they're not doing anything. So I'm fine if I don't do anything. So it's like super easy to get yourself to procrastinate and be like, oh, I'll be able to do this at the last minute. I was able to do it in high school. So I'll be able to do it in college. But college is completely different from high school, you know, like you're really here to like find a career path and you don't want to like just fall behind just because other people seem like you know they're doing their own thing and you're going to be able to catch up but it's very easy to fall behind right that's so true um most of the times I have students that come to my office panicking about their grades it's because they you know procrastinated on a huge paper and it's due the next day or um, they procrastinated on studying and they're panicking on how am I going to cram all this information into, you know, a night. And the truth is you really, you really can't. So that's such great advice, Pooja, that not everybody, you know, it looks like everybody may not be studying or doing those things. You don't know the other work they've done behind closed doors. So I like that. And time for sure. management is definitely a big thing. I write a list every week of the things I need to get done in order of priority and cross it out as I do it 
just crossing it out makes me feel so much better because it looks yeah. like a lot, but as the week goes on, it gets shorter and shorter. And you feel like you achieved something. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, Brayden, what's your second tip? Yeah, so the second tip I have, and I think it's a very important tip, it's to stay healthy and active. Mm. LSU has a, like, amazing UREC. If you've never seen it, never been to it, I highly recommend it. Like, state-of-the-art basketball courts, pools, lazy river, vol like, sand volleyball, like, literally everything you can think of. And, yes, sometimes you can get bogged down with schoolwork and stuff like that. But I do recommend like maybe like 30 minutes a day, maybe an hour of yeah. just like trying to find time to work out because college is stressful at some times. So just doing something to keep your mind off of stuff like mm -hmm. you don't even have to do anything like you don't have to go bench like 300 pounds or squat like <laughs> 100 reps like you can just go shoot basketball with some of your friends and stuff like that. Just something to take your mind off of college because it does get stressful at some points. So it's, it's actually really beneficial to find an outlet that you can, like, just take a break. And I really think, like, staying healthy and active is crucial to that because, mm -hmm. one, it'll make you feel better. You'll be in better shape because the freshman 15, if you don't watch it, it is true. <laughs> um, Very true. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> so, I mean, and, like, you think, oh, it might be a struggle, but honestly, like, an hour a day, like, in college, like I said, you get to pick your schedule one of the harder things is finding stuff to do because you have a ton of free time. And that brings us back to the last point about procrastinating. And that's why a lot of people procrastinate because you feel like you have so much time to do things, but then it all catches mm -hmm. up on you. So right. maybe just like, and it doesn't have to be like every day. It can be like three times a week or whenever you can, but that's my advice just to stay healthy and active. It's very beneficial. It'll just make things a lot easier. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the UREC, and I know, Pusha and Carly, I know y'all talked about going walking the lakes a couple times, you know, I've, I've heard y'all say that, and so, I mean, the campus really is beautiful and conducive to do a lot of different things, whether you want to be indoor or outdoor. Right, and the lakes is always nice, because if you're not somebody who works out a lot, the UREC can be a little intimidating, um, sure. and so just going to walk the lakes on a pretty day is just as good as going to the UREC. Yeah, and you'll find, I mean, you'll find people walking the lakes who are 97 years old, who are going to outwalk you or someone, you know, who never works out a day in their life, you know, so you just, I think it's safe for anybody to join, which is really nice. Yeah, but then uh, one more thing that I just thought about that, I mean, most people don't really think it's a workout, but I think it's more than what people think is LSU, sometimes your classes are kind of spaced out. Um, like this last spring semester, I had a class at, um, I think it was Williams. Um, and like you, the freshmen might not know this, but I stayed in Cypress Hall. So I was like, it was a 20 minute walk. Like mm -hmm. it's like not even kidding. It's a long walk. And I had a class mm -hmm. right before that in Cypress. So a way that you could stay active and may, many people don't think of, and it'll also help you get to your classes quicker would be a bike. Owning a bike yeah. can be very beneficial, <laughs> helps you get the class on time. I go for bike rides every day yeah, like, on the levee. I actually, yeah, I, um, at home, I actually ride a bike with my mom every day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really good for like really good cardio exercise. And it's, you might not think you're working out, but it's something to keep you active. And yeah. I mean, walking is terrible. So go visit riding bike. a bike so much better. Yeah, now we have the bike rentals on campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right, Carly, what would be your tip number six for the group? So my next tip is find your study space. Mm -hmm. LSU has so many hidden gyms on where you can study. And once you find your space, you can study there all the time. Um, there's PFT, which is a super nice building, and there's a bunch of parking for the evenings. Um, the union has a fourth floor that not very many people know about, and there's printers up there that people don't know about, and it's free. And um, there's just so many different places that you can study, and once you find your spot and you stay consistent, it makes it a lot easier because you'll know, okay, well, today I'm going to go back to PFT, mm -hmm. there's Panera Bread there, I'll just eat dinner at Panera Bread while I'm studying. 
um, and all that kind of stuff. There's a Starbucks really close to campus that I love to study at. Um, if you're not hardcore grinding, because it's very busy um, Starbucks, but there's so many hidden gems. And once you find that place and that consistency, it gets so much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know a popular place. I, well, I've studied it. So I lived in Cypress Hall and I ended up studying in, uh, sometimes I stay in my room at the desk, um, at my desk, and then sometimes I'd go to one of the study rooms. But I found a really popular place for students to study would be the quad. A lot of people just like to like take a blanket, take like a, a picnic blanket and just lay it out, stay in the sun, you're outside. It's very peaceful, it's not very loud. And a lot of people would go to study there, um, like in between classes sometimes, or just when you wanna relax on a nice day. There's even study rooms in the UREC that people don't know about that are actually really Yes, there are study rooms so in the UREC. If you wanted to study and then go for a workout, there you go. Right. Yeah. I love that. All right. So, um, got your tip. So, tip number seven is going back to Pooja. So, Pooja, what is your next tip? My next tip is to be prepared to not feel prepared. Ooh. I know. When you get to college, you're like, okay, I'm going to read my syllabus. I'm going to have my books. I'm going to have everything down. But, you know, like some professors will change their plan throughout the semester. Or um, like when you first start out college, you might be like, oh, I can do this. But when it comes down to studying and when it comes down with homework and everything, it's hard to like feel like you're not prepared because like things are just different in college. But mm -hmm. you just need to find your way on how to get adjusted, you know, like maybe it's studying with new people or like finding people in your class that you've never talked to and studying with them and asking them how they're doing in the class and how if you're having trouble with an assignment or a project or something then you know like talking to them and get yourself prepared but it's okay to not be prepared you know there's a lot of stuff going on there's like like just like I know like in my like freshman year I remember where um I had this one class where I was like there was like all these assignments and everything and like I had to go do um experiments for my psych class I was like I don't know how to do this like I've never had to do this in high school or something and it's just like talking to someone in my class you know they were just like oh you you this is how you can do it this is like you can go talk to the professor and everything and I've emailed them and they were able to help me so don't feel like you're alone in college just because you're not prepared for something just like it's gonna be okay Absolutely. And like ask for help. Um, I had a student walk into my office and I got so tickled because he was like, I feel like everyone knows what's going on. And like, I'm just the only one that doesn't know what's happening or how to college. And I was so tickled because the girl that had just walked out before him um, had said the same thing. And so I was like, everyone feels that way. Everyone feels like they're, they don't know what's to, what they're doing or how to college. Um, so even if like people really look like they know what's going on, chances are they don't. So don't feel intimidated by others or, you know, your roommate may look like they have it together, but truthfully, they're just fumbling through their first year, just like you. And don't get down when the first test you take isn't the grade that you wanted. You might have been right. a day student all in high school and then college comes and you made a C on your first test, it's not the end of the world. It just, you weren't prepared for the first test. Taking your first college test is very scary. Um, yeah. There's always a way to bring it back, your grades back up. So don't stress. Can that I say that? <laughs> that's a really big point that she just made, that Carly just made about like college in general. So like, it's very different than high school. Like each semester, more than likely you're gonna have a different professor. Sometimes you might have the same professor, but not all tests are the same. Mm -hmm. They're in, like in classes, like the same class, like we had LSU offers like different biology classes with different professors. Not all tests are the same. Um, so like you need to know that sometimes no matter how prepared you feel, the uh, professor just might throw something that you had no idea. You were like, oh, I prepared for this, but he gave me this or she gave me this. And that's, I'd say that's a really big thing because adjusting to like the professor's type, mm -hmm. um, uh, like the way that they present the test, there's no, like, you really can't prepare for that. Like um, sometimes uh, like this last spring semester, my biology teacher, he offered pretest. So we were able to prepare for the way the exams would be run in some way. But not, I'm telling you right now, a lot of teachers do not do that. Yes, they'll try to guide you 
and try to pre prepare you in um, what they think is the right way, but every student's different. And right. sometimes you can feel like you're fully prepared and just be hit with the curveball. So true. And, that, and, you know, I know that there's lots of support on how to study and different things. So, you know, just you have to, once you take that test, if you don't do well, don't, don't give up, you know, there's so many resources that are going to help you because every teacher does test differently. You know, every person's brain works differently and they present the information differently. So you may have to do some, you know, rethinking and restructuring of how you prepare for an exam. So I think that's great advice. All right, um, so Braden, we'll throw it back to you now. So what is tip number eight for you? So tip number eight is overwhelming is a constant emotion. Ooh, yeah. It is very easy to be overwhelmed in college, especially when you procrastinate. Procrastinating um, <laughs> leads to being overwhelmed a lot of the time. Um, I'd say that's probably the most important thing with dealing with like being overwhelmed. Also, like, mm -hmm. like we said earlier, staying active. So I feel like a bunch of these tips end up relating to each other. Because mm -hmm. if you stay active and you don't procrastinate, it will help you not feel as overwhelmed. But as uh, being students currently at LSU and just being college students in general, we want to give you all the advice that being overwhelmed is something that is expected. Like we're not trying to sugarcoat it or anything. You will feel overwhelmed at some point and like others mm -hmm. will be a little more underwhelmed than you might be. And then there mm -hmm. are some that like just get completely overwhelmed like yeah. once again everyone's different but we just wanted to kind of give you all the advice that to just be prepared and just really try like I'd say the best way is just to try to minimize how much you're overwhelmed by not procrastinating mm -hmm. staying on like task um and like some like Tigerland's a fun place a lot of students at LSU were known to party and stuff like that but honestly staying on track turning down this party like you have a big yeah. test coming up saying no to this party it's a really big thing that i'd say you're gonna learn how, how to do because like in college like we said lots of free time lots of decisions you're this might be the first time that you're really on your own and you're your own person mm -hmm. so you're finally now starting to learn that the choices you make also have consequences and unfortunately in, co in college these decisions can lead to you feeling completely overwhelmed. Absolutely. Um, you know, overwhelming, you know, feeling overwhelmed is, is completely normal. And the biggest thing we don't want a student to do, I've had students do this, is they, they're there for a week, they're overwhelmed because they're adjusting for the first time and then they want to leave. And then they come back, you know, in the spring semester going, Miss Haley, you were so right. Like I regret leaving or um, I'm so glad I stayed and, and pushed through those feelings. So, you know, you really want to just talk to somebody about those feelings because there's always support and help. And, and, you know, like Braden mentioned, you know, the party scene, you know, that's at every college. You're going to, you're going to be tempted to go to functions and events and parties, but you really need to make sure you're doing what's best for you and for your degree and, and progressing. So that's, that's really great advice. All right, Carly, um, we're going to go back to you for tip number nine. So this one's super important. Make time for you. Make Ooh. some me time. Um, I lived, I'm going to be a senior next semester. I lived in a dorm my freshman year, and I've lived in my sorority house for the past two years. I'm finally living in an apartment next year, but I have never had alone time and I've had to force myself to make alone time and it's okay sometimes to tell your friends you know what I just need some me time I need time just to think and be on my own and just you know at home you can go in to your room and shut the door and you're fine but when you're in a dorm and you have a roommate sometimes they that's just not an option to be alone so you have to figure out what's the best way for you to get a your own me time, even if it's driving around the lakes for 20 minutes, just listening to music, just mm -hmm. find your own me time because you'll need it and just take a step back and just breathe sometimes. Yeah. I know Brayden, you lived in Cyprus and you know, you lived with mm -hmm. a roommate and then you had two other sweet mates on the other side. How was that for you? Like finding that, that balance? 
Um, so finding that balance, I mean, at first it seemed difficult, especially like um, if you have no idea who your roommate's going to be at all and you kind of get like a random roommate. Um, for me, um, my roommate was from a different state, but fortunately enough, I was able to talk to him over the summer um, going into the fall semester. So we kind of had a general understanding of each other, mm-hmm. but talking to your roommate and stuff like that, like he and I, we'd always like, yes, it's really important to build friendships, especially with your roommate, because it's the person you're living with. Right. Um, but each of you have to understand that, like, sometimes you do need to be alone. So sometimes um, he just go off into a study room by himself just because some people learn better that way. They just want to be on their own just to relax. Maybe something happens. Um, I'd say it's just re- it's really important to, like, make time for yourself. Like uh, yeah. Carly said, it's just, um, it's something that's really overlooked and it's something you do get caught up in, um, just being like overwhelmed and stuff like that. Um, like what, 10, 15 minutes a day might be enough, maybe more, but mm-hmm. there, are, there are plenty of places on campus. There are plenty of pe- like places or things to do, places to go where you can just be alone, go walk to Mike's exhibit, just go see Mike. Um, yeah. I don't know, there's just a lot of things you can do to just be alone and just like calm down because yes, it's fun to be around people, but there are times that you just need to be by yourself so you can just calm down and focus and not have to worry about anything else. Absolutely. Or zone out. Like I know I get on TikTok, which is probably the worst thing you could possibly get on. (laughs) You're like sucked in forever. But you know, sometimes you just need that mental break and that alone, like you said, that alone time, eat lunch by yourself or, you know, I've even gone, I've, try to get Pooja to do this, go see a movie by herself. I'm like, it's so liberating to do this. Um, but sometimes you do, you just need that a long time. So I, I agree with you there. So Pooja, I'm going to turn it back to you for tip number 10. What would you say is the next tip you would want students to know? I'd say the next tip is to stay on campus instead of going home every weekend. Ooh, I think yeah. when you first get to college, it's very like nerve wracking. And the first thing you want to do is go back to that comfort that you had at home where Mm -hmm. your parents are taking care of you, you're doing everything. But really your freshman year is the time to learn how to be independent. You know, you're doing your own laundry, you're eating your food at your own time, you're learning how to be your own person. And also like, I don't know about you guys, but I get I get FOMO, fear of missing out. And so mm-hmm. I, for, I live an hour away from here. I live in New Orleans and I'm pretty sure I went home the first weekend and I come back and my friends were all talking about what they did this weekend and how they went to go visit Mike and how they walked down to Canes and how like they just made all these memories. And I was like, I missed out on so much just because I decided to go home and go see my parents. You now your parents mm-hmm. are one phone call away. Like they're still gonna be there for you and everything. Mm-hmm. I FaceTime my parents probably every other day. I talk to my parents every single day and I talk to my brother every day. It's as if I'm with them. They don't leave me alone. But you know, like- <laughs> Pooja and I have both, um, we both talk to our parents walking to class. Yeah. When just you're walking to and from class, it's the perfect time. Call your mom, call your dad, call your grandpa. It makes the time go by faster and you're still getting that sense of home. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I say like this, like, oh, you can go ahead. No, I was done. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Um, so staying on campus is a big thing because um, not everyone lives close, um, especially like on the weekends. Like if you're traveling and you're like three, four hours away and you have like a test coming up or something that may not benefit you because um, instead of that time you could be studying at your dorm or in your apartment or with friends Mm -hmm. you're traveling on the road um so that's like my thing like personally like this is honestly like your parents like growing up not everyone's supposed to go to college like it's not meant for everyone but for the kids that do go to college this is what your parents like want to see they want you to be on your own experience college um learn how to make decisions on your own and basically like grow up in a way um, mm-hmm. I just think it's really big and like uh, what Pooja said, um, yeah, you could miss out on something um, that your friends are doing, like you're like, ah, oh, if only I was on campus to do that. Like, yes, it's important to go see family every once in a while um, or like honestly, like as much as you want to, but 
there are benefits to staying on campus um, rather than going back home every weekend, especially live farther away. Also, if you do live nearby, tell your parents to come up for the weekend and just like get lunch or something, you know, like they would be willing to drive. My parents have come up multiple times on a Saturday and we'll just grab lunch. Maybe they'll drop off food and then they'll go back home that day. So if you really do miss your parents, you know, just ask them to come up. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. I had a student um, last semester that he came to me and he was like, you know, Miss Haley, like, I just feel like I'm not progressing. Um, I don't feel connected to, to LSU right now. Like, I'm not really making friends. And so we started talking, you know, openly, like, well, what are you doing or what are you not doing um, for that to happen? And the number one thing he's like well I mean the minute like I can leave on you know Friday after my class I go straight home and I'm like you're traveling you know four or five hours every weekend to go home so you're not staying and getting to hang out with people and um he I was like let me just give you one one suggestion will you please stay one weekend and hang out with the people that you've been you know hanging out with in class or after class and he did that one weekend and he came to me and he was like, you were so right. Uh, I actually like made some really good friends and good memories. And he's like, I'm going to stop going home as much. And, and, and not that it's a bad thing to go home because it does rejuvenate you, but you also have to invest where your new home is too and invest in the people that you want to be a part of. So you definitely want to take some time to, to make this feel like home as well. But, you know, stick yeah, and that does... That brings me to another point that I uh, forgot to mention. Yes, going home is fun and it's nice, but now that you think about like your college schedule and the things that you're um, going to do, going home is normally like when you're a college student, going home is associated with Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, sometimes in the summer, unless you're older and you live on your own. So all of those all three of those things involve one thing, and that is not studying. <laughs> so during that time, you're yeah. going to want to visit with your family and um, just not worry about school and nothing like that. So that's where it can be kind of dangerous, like going home on the weekends, because you're going to learn to associate being home. Like, you're not going to want to study. Like, who wants to right. study when they're at home? And that you was the I mean? hardest adjustment um, with all mm -hmm. of campus closing is you finally had to make home your yes. spot and not your chill spot anymore right it's not yeah that that was more at your classroom mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i'd say that was probably one of the hardest things to do with all this uh stuff that's been going on is coming home and you're like coming home for christmas break and you're just doing nothing and now you're coming home and you're having to go to college like it's just mm -hmm. a different feel um and like Yes, um, it is beneficial, but it can distract you if you do not watch out. Yeah, I know. When you, um, I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Uh, I can't remember who did it. It was some video. It was like being a back home baller. Like when you go home, like you just want your family to take care of you. You want to relax. You want to watch Netflix. You want to have so much fun. You don't want to be, you know, focused on that. So. You, um, you want to utilize that time wisely. So if you go home every weekend, you probably aren't studying and getting on top of things like you need to be. So that's, that's really great advice. Um, Brayden, we're going to go back to you for tip number 11. So what's your next? Yes, tip number 11 is a big one, and that is to get involved. A lot of colleges, especially LSU, there are a ton of things to do on campus. There are a lot of um, clubs to join. There are a lot of intramural sports to do. Um, there are clubs you can join for your major. There's like for kinesiology majors, you can join the kinesiology club, stuff like that. Getting involved is also another way you can stay active with um, out having to go work out. Um, I know at LSU, I'm a part of the club baseball team. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going play baseball, being active, hanging out with friends. It's a way to, to meet new people that you wouldn't normally have classes with. Um, and then, like, for me, I get to go uh, during the spring on weekends. I get to go travel and go play baseball against other teams. But I'm also getting to travel with some friends. And that's really fun. Um, but another thing about joining clubs and organizations is 
like me, I'm a pre-med major, like I stated, and I plan on going to graduate school. Some of these clubs and organizations can look really good on your resume and help build your resume for colleges. Um, kind of by like doing things that other kids normally don't do. It helps yourself stand out um, along with making friends, um, building uh, a network of people you know along like down the road. Absolutely. Um, I know that Pooja and um, Carly, y'all are ambassadors for the college. And I know Braden, um, you applied to be ambassador, which we don't know yet. We're still waiting on all the, the scores to come in for that. But um, what other things uh, girls have y'all done too, besides, you know, ambassadors? Um, I joined a sorority freshman year, which I know isn't for everybody. Um, but it, joining a sorority, being part of ambassadors, um, I joined the kinesiology club. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different things and you really have to find the ones that you can do with your schedule. You can't mm -hmm. join 600 clubs your first semester and expect to adjust to college, be in class and join clubs. Start out with one and if you don't like it, then don't mm -hmm. go back and go to a different thing. There's some clubs that have meetings once a week and there's some that have them once a month. So you just have to find the one that works best for you. Yeah, absolutely. To add on to what Carly said, like, don't be afraid to join something and then not like it. Like, I joined, I did ambassadors my freshman year, and that was one thing. And then my sophomore year, I was like, oh, I want to do something else. And I rushed, and I got into a sorority. But then I realized it wasn't for me. But I met so many people through that entire process. That was still a good year for me. And just because I decided to drop and not do it the rest of the year, it was still a great experience that year that I did do it. And I'm still friends with a lot of those people. And then my junior year, I decided to join St. St. Jude's Heart to Pull. So like each year, I was the type of person who added like one more thing, but that's mm -hmm. the type of person I am. But just because I didn't like one thing, I found something else that I liked mm -hmm. even more. So don't be yeah. discouraged if you don't like something. Just try something else. Absolutely. Trial and error, you know? But there is a point where, yeah, so there is a point where getting involved, you can be too involved with stuff. Sure. So like right now, um, like especially since I'm, I'd say a more difficult major, um, like the more coursework you have, um, just like there are certain things that like you can push yourself too much. There are some people that really need to join like lots of clubs to be social mm -hmm. and to keep themselves on track. But then there are some people that maybe just need to join one club just to do something. But mm -hmm. like, for me, um, I'm a part of AED, um, which is a pre-med honor society. And then I'm a part of club baseball right now. I did apply to be uh, an ambassador for the college. And if I became an ambassador for the college, that'd probably be my limit um, mm -hmm. just because of like the, um, the amounts of times, uh, like the time that uh, each club demands, like mm -hmm. for club baseball and the, pre-med honor society they're kind of lenient but for ambassadors they're more strict um mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i also like you can also take that into account some clubs are more lenient with things you have to do things you have to attend stuff you have to go to um so that's another big factor and then of course clubs are fun and all but you're here for your degree and even though clubs are fun your main thing is coursework so i'd say mm -hmm. no matter what you do with picking a club or even deciding not to join one, um, your coursework needs to be your main focus. Um, right. Like first and foremost, although I do highly recommend joining a club or something, but even if you don't do that, there are plenty of things to do to stay involved, go to football games, meet people, um, go to basketball games, go to volleyball games. A lot of people love the gymnastics meets. Um, mm -hmm. Those are ways to get involved. I know Cypress Hall and other uh, residence halls, they have like events where you can just meet people, meet your, uh, some professors, meet people that are in your college. Um, mm -hmm. Another big thing would be welcome week for freshmen. There's lots yeah. of stuff. I know a lot of students that did go to welcome week. Um, like they'd go to a select few things. For me, I tried to go to everything um, mm -hmm. just so I know people um, and kind of learn how OSU works. Um, so just stuff like that. Like, I'm not saying yeah. like getting involved means you have to join five a clubs club. and stuff like that. Just like, yeah, just like doing stuff around campus and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. what I, um, like that's also getting involved. And that's 
I'd say that would probably work out for most people. If you yeah, not yeah. The club. I agree with you. I mean, there's, I mean, it doesn't have to be, I never, I never was much of a, a you know, a club person. I was more of, I like to go to different events or help out or volunteer. And so there's tons of ways you can do that on campus. You know, just take a, take an offer, uh, take the advantages that are given to you that are, there's, there's so many events right at your doorstep that you can literally walk out of your, you know, your dorm or your residence hall and be a part of. So I think that that's really great advice. Um, all right, Carly, tip number 12. What is your next tip? So my next tip is learn to cope with homesickness. Um, mm -hmm. I am from Texas. So for me to go home on a weekend was um, a really big commitment for mm -hmm. me. Um, and it wasn't something I got to do very often. It was mostly during fall breaks and all that. So it was very hard when I'm very, very close to my family and I didn't know how to do that. And so it kind of goes back to when we were talking about earlier, I call my mom and I call my dad and my grandpa every single day to um, try to cope with that. And it's very easy to do it when you're finding times in between things and you're not feeling as if you're wasting time on the phone for 20 minutes, do it while you're walking mm -hmm. to class, do it while mm -hmm. you're doing something else. And it doesn't feel as much of, I'm not going to say a chore, but when you are mm -hmm. homesick, you do need that family time and that's how you have to do it. And it, it ends up working out. I'm a senior now and I don't feel as I need to go home every weekend. And there is times where, mm -hmm yes, I do go home because I was sick and I wasn't feeling good. And of course you just want to be in your own bed, but mm -hmm. um, it is okay to feel homesick, but there are definitely ways to cope with it and it will be fine. And you'll find your way that what you've got to do and it'll all work out. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, Something that I would uh, add to that is learning to cope with homesickness is uh, honestly, one of the, like, I'd say more crucial things, because no matter who you are, no matter how independent you are, you will um, be homesick at some point during college, and yes, it's good and beneficial to go home maybe, uh, like, uh, once or twice, but there are times when if you're really homesick and you keep on going home, it's just going to make you even more homesick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's where, like, I say learning how to balance it out. And like uh, Carly said, like a phone call, sometimes that's what you need, FaceTime, have them come visit you. Um, I'd say that's a really important part um, of coping. And um, I'd say this is also one of like the over, another overlooked um, thing that a lot of college students don't um, think about. Um, but yeah, I'd say, Learning how to cope with it is a big thing because you will be mm -hmm. homesick at some point, no matter who you are. Totally. That, I mean, no matter if you're an hour away or 18 or across the country, and we've got students, you know, joining us from California, from New York, or from all over, and a plane ride is a huge commitment. So really they have to, you know, limit themselves to just the breaks of going home because the cost is, you know, it gets expensive going back and forth. So you know, find what works for you. Is it FaceTime? Is it, you know, calling your person? You know, it doesn't have to be mom and dad. It could be your best friend. It could be your neighbor. It could be, it could be you just know, just calling us to see your dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's your that's pet. Like, that's my that. mom's like, here's Jolie, and she shows my dog, and I'm, that's all I needed for the day was to see my dog. I mean, it might get a little weird if it's a goldfish, but I mean, <laughs> you know, that's your thing. You know, you got to sometimes see the pet lizard. So, you know, take advantage of that. And we have such great technology that, you know, it really makes going away for college a lot easier um, than it than it was in the past. So I think that's great. Um, Pooja, you're going to give us tip number 13. So what is your next tip? All right. So my next tip is to learn your study style. I know when you come from high school, you think you have it down, like how you studied in high school is how you're going to study in college. But in co like the stuff that you do in one year in high school is the stuff that you do in one semester in college so it's a lot more mm -hmm. fast paced and you have a lot more material so it just mm -hmm. takes like time to adjust but don't be discouraged if you don't like as we mentioned earlier if you don't do well on your first exam because taking that first exam you were exposed to how the teacher teaches and how he tests his material and that's only going to help you in the future like i'm a senior mm -hmm. now and 
everything that I've learned over the past three years, every teacher that has given me a different test, I've learned different study techniques. And I've, by now I put it all together. So mm -hmm. like we mentioned earlier, be prepared not to be prepared. I would have exams where the exam was nothing like the professor said it was gonna be. But now <laughs> for a, a class I'm taking next semester, I'm like, okay, well, he could possibly do this too. So I have to make sure that I study everything, not just like mm -hmm. the professor says, but everything. And I'm prepared for that now when I wasn't prepared for it freshman year. So you and start to funny. add on as you grow, but mm -hmm. you know, we even have uh, going for gold, which I think someone else can add a little bit more to that. Cause I, yeah, I can, I can, I can talk about going for gold. So Alyssa, one of our counselors in our office, and those of you who are going to be joining us later for orientation, um, we'll get to meet her, but she puts on this wonderful workshop called going for gold and it's free. And a lot of times the professors will hold bonus points for going to this event. They will give bonus. Yes. Which is my uh, professors for, uh, one of your professors did that. Yeah. So, you know, in the event you learn, what is your, what is your study? Like, what is your learning style? How do you best receive and take in information and be able to retain that information? Because every professor is going to teach differently and some will teach towards your learning style and, and some won't. So you've got to learn how to take that information and go back to your room um, and, you know, interpret it in a way that you now understand it and can remember it. So I think that's a great tip, Pooja, about knowing your learning style because typically how you learn in high school is going to be a little different than what you learn, how you learn in college. Uh, professors are now asking you to um, understand the material from all angles. It's not just memorization. It's not just definitions. It's how to apply the information. Um, how are you going to utilize this information and why is it important that you know this? And I think you need to remember that you need to find your learning style. That's the key. Mm -hmm. The way your friend said she studied might not be what works for you and you can do yeah. it she got an A and you failed the test. That it's, you've got to find your learning style. Don't try to just mold to what everybody else is doing. Absolutely. Flashcards work for me, but they don't. Yeah, and so like that's, mm -hmm. yeah, like for me, I'd say I wouldn't be like the model student because I'm like the study, like at the minimal, like not minimal amount of time, but definitely not like, hardcore studying because I do believe you can overstudy in my case mm -hmm. so like spending like five hours on stuff mm -hmm. five hours on something it's not beneficial for me so maybe like an hour or two would be plenty for me and I know that's not the case for everyone else because I'd have um my mates and my roommates that have to study longer I mean even though we're kind of like some of the similar classes like I'd study for 30 minutes an hour and they'd still be studying it's it's just about who you are um for me sometimes uh i learn better by people like if you show me how to do something the idea just sticks um now a lot of people are like that some people learn books um some people uh like to watch videos listen to stuff and stuff like that it's mm -hmm. all about learning what fits you best and uh like going for gold is very beneficial it teaches you how to um stay on time not to procrastinate it teaches you different learning styles and stuff like that absolutely all right brain we're turning it back to you now for tip number 14 so what is your last yes. tip for the group my last tip is to meet your professors and to know it's okay um uh to ask for help um so this is probably one of the biggest things in college building a relationship and knowing your professor um, especially in my case or anyone that wants to go to a graduate school this is very important because yes you want to learn how to talk to people yes you want to build a connection yes it does help out along the road if the teachers or the professors do know you like I said earlier uh, in this hanging with Haley um, bonus points um, they'll like you more they'll be more willing to do stuff for you um, but like in my case, it's really important to build, um, relationships with your professors because one day I'm going to need a recommendation letter for medical school. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're going to any graduate school or anything else, it's really great to have 
someone to write a recommendation letter for you, especially if it's a college professor. Um, I feel like that's overlooked um, a lot of times. Um, and just the relationship in general, like, yeah, they're a professor and some of them, like some are really nice, some are more strict and stern, but it's nice to have some relationship with them. Um, mm -hmm. Because yes, some of your classes are really big, but then some of them are small. So um, it's just, I think it makes it a lot easier, like for me in general, to know your professor, um, just because it's like, who wants to go listen to a stranger every day? Like, right. it's better to listen to someone that you know, than someone that you like, I guess, don't really know. Yeah. Um, but then like the second part of this is knowing when to ask for help is very crucial. One thing about LSU is the professors are really good about um, office hours and making time for students to ask questions and helping them out because it, like, no matter what the professor is, yeah, there are some that are like, okay, do this, this, and this, whatever you make is your grade. But then there are others that really care for you to do the best that you can do and they'll do anything they can to help you succeed. Um, and that's just like knowing when to ask for help is really big because like for me um this year in chemistry one of my professors she's a great professor um and she's very knowledgeable but the way she taught really didn't fit with me at first so i actually went to haley and i was like stressed and i was like yeah i might need to drop the class um <laughs> stuff like that she's like no just go ask for help um and just talk to the professor a little more like ask for more things ask her what she recommends and stuff like that actually ended up making a really good grade in the class because I stuck through and I asked for help. Mm -hmm. But if I just would have been like, so what? I'll just um, uh -oh. do it. Up there. College isn't cheap. Um, yes, you can um, take a bunch of hours and um, you really don't have to graduate like in four years but that does cost money. Summer mm -hmm. school, yes, it's beneficial and sometimes it's mandatory, but um, it does cost money and not everyone, I know a lot of people come from different financial backgrounds and a lot of people like that just won't cut it. Mm -hmm. So knowing when you need help is a really important thing. Um, like even, like I'd say like the first test like, yes, you have to adjust. And that's sometimes when you'll figure out like what you need to do in that. But if you're on the second test and you're not doing well, there's something that you're just not understanding. It's really important to know that you need to ask for help because in college, mm -hmm. especially like for science majors and stuff like that, and even in math, stuff builds. And if you it don't builds. get one concept, then you might not get the concept at the end of the year. And mm -hmm. Yeah, you might get through the class, but like I might pass three out of the four um, tests and I might have a good grade in the class, but then the final comes around and then things end up building on each other and you just absolutely bomb the final. That's right. like, you can't really do anything about that then. So asking for help mm -hmm. um, and knowing when to ask for help are really important. Absolutely. And, you know, um, it's never too late to ask for help. That's, that's the big message here. And, you know, Braden's right, everything builds. So you, you want to get help as soon as you can. So that way, you know, you may not start off strong, but you can always finish strong like he did in chemistry. So our last final tip, and I know Carly, you actually have a little bonus tip for us. So what is your final tip? And then share with us your bonus tip. So my final tip is to get to know your roommate and learn how to be considerate. Um, I know there are people that room with somebody that was their best friend and by the end of it, they're not best friends anymore because they never learned how to be considerate to each other. Um, and then there's people like me who I went to college not knowing one person and I had a random roommate and now she's my best friend. Um, so learning y'all's schedules and learning how to find that time, if you and your roommate, you just need that time to yourself, like we talked about earlier, get to know her schedule, get to know when she's not going to be there, get to know when you're not going to be there and let her, let the other person know, because that really is a big thing is you 
don't ever get that alone time and learning mm -hmm. to be considerate to your roommate if she's sitting at the desk or he or she is sitting at the desk studying know that maybe you should be a little quieter because <laughs> they're busy or same and it's okay to tell your roommate hey i'm studying i can't talk right now um yep. you just have to learn each other's styles learn how to be considerate and it'll all work out yeah and, and what's your bonus tip my bonus tip is to just be courageous just mm -hmm. i guess i like to say like nike just do it if mm -hmm. there's something going on down the hall at your dorm just go hang out if there's something that you think is not so fun and they're just handing out lollipops downstairs, go introduce yourself. Just be out there, be <laughs> correct. Make the best. Yes, just make the best mm. of your whole experience because you it really is what you put in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I want to, um, we have one quick question. Um, uh, so one of the questions we got is Wi-Fi available everywhere on campus or just certain classrooms? Yes, it it's is available everywhere. everywhere. And it is amazing. Yes. Um, the minute I get and on that's like, connect, so it's, it's great. It's always mm -hmm. nice you. It's nice on football. Yeah, and you'll learn. <laughs> yes, it's very, very crucial when um, during like football games because everyone and like I remember going to football games like I gr grown up going to like LSU games uh when I was younger and I don't know like for us teenagers one of the worst things is you go into the game and no connection no You're connection. Just out tailgating, <laughs> no connection but that's one benefit like being a student uh when you come on campus you'll um get your LSU email and you'll get your password and you get that all set up and that's how you will eventually log in but mm -hmm. uh Yes, it is everywhere on campus. And do we have any more questions? Does anybody want to chat in any more questions um, while we have, you know, these great students here answering for you guys? Um, feel free to type in. We're going to hang out for just a second. So um, feel free to type in any other additional questions you have. Um, while we're waiting for any more questions to come in, I want to thank Braden, Carly, and Pooja for taking time out of their schedule this summer. Um, these students, you know, I've gotten to work, you know, I've known Braden since before he came to LSU in the recruitment process, as well as Carly. I met Pooja when she was on campus and, you know, these have been just wonderful students and, you know, they're great resources for anyone when you come to campus. They'll be happy to help you guys navigate or answer questions. They're always willing to a helping hand and I think you'll find from pretty much all of our students on campus they, they really do mm -hmm. help you um, feel comfortable and um, navigate your first year so if you're nervous at all just you know feel free to reach out to one of these guys or myself or if you want me to connect you with someone I can do that as well so we're, we're pretty excited um, we have yes uh, question two questions all right so yeah Corey, um, computers. Um, personally, I have the MacBook Pro, um, but honestly, anything works. It's, uh, I'd say whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I got a Mac because, I mean, I like Apple. It's Apple's set up really well. It's pretty easy to use. Um, and I just like the fact that I could connect everything. Like my phone's connected to my computer. Um, uh, my watch is connected to my phone, like just having everything that's mm -hmm. being connected, like it just gives you the ability to um, like, I might not have my computer at some point, but hey, I can uh, still do stuff on my phone and it can be saved to my computer. So I guess it's just preference. I mean, there's no right yeah. answer um, to the computer. I mean, yeah, to I me, I did get a Mac. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so like I got up, so like for me, when I went sh to look for computer, um, I ended up choosing a MacBook, but because of like being pre-med and like having like to do a bunch of things, I ended up getting um, one that costs a little bit more. So I'd have a little bit more storage um, on my computer and it could like process things a little bit faster and stuff like that. Um, I'd say that's important. Um, so yeah, it does depend on your major, but I mean, I'm not saying like, if you don't get a MacBook, then 
gets the end of the world or no like i've that. got i've got students who use both i will tell any student mm -hmm. pick what's comfortable with the worst thing you can do is get a whole new computer system you've never used before and have to figure it out your first week of class that's the worst um our next question was um did you find it easy to make friends during welcome week yeah. yes it is actually super easy to make friends because the way it works is you're actually like, I think, I can't remember if it was like 8.30 in the morning or 9.30 in the morning, but you have this um, like group of uh, kids that's like, um, that you're with um, and that's your group, but you also have events throughout um, the uh, like week where you can meet more students than just the people that you're in the group with. Yeah. Um, and like for me, like I still, I'm still friends with uh, like three or four of the kids. Like I talk to them on an everyday basis of the kids that, was, that were in my group. But um, a majority of your friends are going to be from the other events because there'll be people. Um, well, and I would that say that you. Uh, I would say it like I said earlier. It's what you put into it. Um, some events you might go and you might meet one person and some events you might go and you might meet 10 people. It um, really just depends on the event and if you're into the event or if you're not so into the event. There's events for every kind of person. Yeah, I'm going to answer this last yeah. question really fast before we go. Um, it's can you use a recorder in class for notes? So most professors are completely comfortable with it. I always, out of respect for the professor, I ask. Um, just mm -hmm. let them know, you know, that you really need that to, you know, study with and, and just get their permission, but most are completely comfortable with it. And some professors even record their lectures for students anyway, um, mm -hmm. provide their PowerPoint. So, but out of respect for the someone. always just ask. Well, yeah, I would ask them because that was my case, like this year. All my professors are cool with it, except for my one, like one teacher I had, who was my chemistry teacher. Like she was like, you have your notes, you can have your computer out if you're doing notes on that. But that's like it, like no phones, nothing like that, because she wanted you to be like on task. And, because I mean, sometimes you can get distracted if you have your phone in class. Absolutely. So again, just out of respect, as but. I want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, this was our first of uh, many series to come. So stay tuned every Thursday from three to four for hanging with Haley. Thank y'all. Bye everybody.